was only three years old when his father, President John F. Kennedy, was assassinated. John F. Kennedy Jr. touched the hearts of millions when he bravely saluted his father's casket in this unforgettable picture Unforgettable. Here. People's fascination with JFK Jr. extended throughout his life, which was cut short in a terrible plane crash 20 years ago. A new documentary looks at the year leading up to his death. Take a look. Writing a book about John involves not only getting access to documents that no one has seen before, it also involves talking to people who have never spoken about John before. I think the pressure of trying to be someone that the world wants him to be. All his conflicts about celebrity, about politics. And I took John, I put him under the microscope. What John said to me was, I don't know if I can get through this. And it's only been now, as I go through this process, that I'm rediscovering him. Joining us now is Stephen Gillen. He is a longtime friend of JFK Jr. and the author of America's Reluctant Prince, The Life of John F. Kennedy Jr. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you so much for being here. Good afternoon. It's nice to be with you. Thank you so much for being with us. I want to go back to 99 when you had your own personal health crisis, just to give a perspective of how well you knew this man. He said, I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. He repeated it twice. What, a, what an influence that this man had on your life. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, John was you know, the most remarkable uh, person I ever met. Um, he was so full of life and so full of energy. And what most people don't know, he was enormously generous especially with his friends. Uh, so John would rarely use his clout to help himself, but he was not afraid to use it to help other people. So the story you referenced, I developed this tremor in my hand, which I still have. Uh, at the time, I was told it may be the beginning stages of ALS. And I didn't tell John, but he found out about it and he called me the next morning, which was the Saturday before, the Saturday before he died. And, um, and I'll never forget, I can hear his words in my ears when I, when I, when I, when I think of this, he said, Stevie, for better or worse, he always called me Stevie, the only person on the planet called me Stevie. He said, Stevie, for better or worse, my family is well connected in New York medical circles. Um, so if there's anything you need, you just let me know. And then there was a long pause and he said, Stevie, I'll take care of you. And then I think just to make sure I heard it, he said it again. He said, Stevie, I'll take care of you. And then he said something that only someone worth $100 million could say. He said, don't worry about that insurance stuff. You know, for, for most of us, insurance is the lifeline. For John, it was sure. just stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But it gives you an idea what an enormously generous act uh, on his part. And for me, what's so painful, what, why I've been so haunted by that for so many years is that following Saturday morning, at almost the exact time he had called me the week before, I woke up and found out his plane was missing. And here's a guy who's willing to move heaven and earth for me a week earlier, and I'm completely helpless. I can do nothing for him. You know, I, you had the rare opportunity to be a historian and be close to him. I guess you met him at Brown University. You were a teaching assistant. He was one of your students. You became friends. But was there, the people that you interview, were they open to you doing this book? Is that why you got certain access? I, yes, I was, I was able to get access to more people than anyone else in the past. And, and, and I, not only did I speak to people who would not speak to other people, but I also, there are also some of John's friends who had spoken in the past who opened up with, to me about things they had not spoken about before. So I think partly it's because they knew I was friends with John. Uh, they knew that we had a, a, a respectful and, and, and warm relationship. Uh, so I think they trusted me. And for me, you know, while John was alive, I protected his privacy like most of his friends. But now that he's gone and we're getting older, I fear that our memories will not be recorded. And I, you know, I don't want John to be remembered as the hunk flunks. I don't want him to be remembered as the sexiest man alive. The John I knew was so much more complicated than that. He was a man of great depth and decency. And that's what I try to capture in the book and which I think A&E does so well in their documentary about John that airs on uh, Tuesday, July 16th. Which I think is important, as Karen, uh, Carol Radswell says, it's no longer about privacy, it's about legacy. And that's why I think she was so willing to open up to you, which I think is just such an important statement. That's right. I mean, as an historian and his friend, I believe it's my responsibility now to preserve that legacy. 
and to make sure people know the real John, not the John that you saw on the cover of magazines or the guy who had trouble with his bar exam, but a, a real human being. And what, I think what the documentary does so well is it humanizes him. I mean, you can empathize with John. He's, yes, he's rich, he's famous, and he's fairly good looking, but, mm -hmm. uh, but he also, he has some of the same struggles that we have in our lives. And, and I think it's important to understand him as, as, as a human being uh, and not just as some type of icon. Hmm. Well, it's been 20 years, and I just want to say you continue to grieve this death, and I just wanted to say we're so sorry for your loss, as mm -hmm. we are sorry for yeah. his loss as well. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. I really do. And if you're ever in Connecticut, you have an open invitation to come on this show. Yeah, we'd love open to have more invitation. time. I'll be there. Okay. I have three pages of questions, Steve, <laughs> and I need to get to them. <laughs> but we know other people are waiting for you, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Biography, JFK Jr., The Final Year, premieres next Tuesday, July 16th at 9 p.m. on A&E. It is much-watched television. You have to see it. Yeah, it looks really good. And if you want to look for Stephen's book, America's Reluctant Prince, The Life of John F. Kennedy Jr., it is also available for purchase and download right now. All right, coming up next, we're going to be talking about steps to take to keep the criminals from getting at your hard-earned money. Better is back in two.